Hey guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, we talk about the Chromecast as it's taking over TV, Google Glass, is it going to break your neck, and Chuck Norris. All that and more, Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place, PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. Gentlemen, welcome to the Awesome Cast 160. We're about to get geeky in here, talking about tech, whatever is awesome on the internet, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I'm Mike Sorg here from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, in Sorgatron Media Central. Uh, and with me on the couch, as typical, is Chachi of uh, a very pink Chachi today. Uh, of InsertCoinToBegin.com at Chachi says, if you may know him from Twitter. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of a big deal on Twitter. You're kind of a big deal on Twitter. I'm kind of okay. a big deal on Twitter. All right. All right. Although I wasn't blocked by the Pope, so <laughs> what? Apparently that's a thing. <laughs> like getting blocked by the Pope. You know he's doing indulgences like via Twitter now. Huh. Like like he will like uh, uh he will like forgive your sins via Twitter. Is that is that a thing? Oh, it is now. He's the Pope. If he says so, that's uh. Well, I'm I'm happy to know that this Pope actually read their own rules oh good <laughs> well that's a discussion for some <laughs> other time i'm sure um so for the awesome papple cut still also we'll, we'll get into that um this week i learned in tech that sorg is a little girl uh we'll explain that some other time or that's why you should join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com <laughs> for those kinds of comments also joining us is norm hulesman he's keeping the girl safe over there at twixie.com how you doing at mr derby i'm doing great and i'm pretty sure the catholic church uh acknowledged that indulgences are no longer a thing a real thing is it indul- so, maybe it's, uh, not, it's not I, I don't you can join me on my other podcast pope talk uh, dot podcast.com uh, we'll discuss it there <laughs> he's doing something with the twitters right um just ne- never mind yes I mr derby on twitter and i have not been blocked or followed by the pope and that's fine with me i'm sure my pastor uh would be happy about that well i, I kind of engage with the pope i kind of want to be blocked by the pope now <laughs> just like i mean what do you have to do to get blocked by the pope and not be hated by every other person on Twitter. I'm for sure being, there's a lot of things. For, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of really bad jokes that I'm not even going to get into right now. Uh, maybe it's just could, people that talk about you could engage in, I'm sure just even thinking about those jokes will block you from the, from the Pope. <laughs> Speaking of Twitter cl- clowns, um, I'll just jump right in and say I found a new, a new Twitter account that uh, was on uh, – it was after Yin's team on Friday. Uh, Pirates Facebook is the Twitter account, and uh, it – basically retweets all of the just the idiotic things that get posted on the pirates facebook page like um like just bad just like people who can't type in english and what's, um, you know just the racist and this awful comment and it's just it's just hilarious oh but is it is it facebook out. pirates as the at? It, it might be at facebook pirates or it's either it's either at facebook pirates or at Pirates Facebook. Oh, that's it. Yeah. They call it so, Pirates Facebook. Not everything is, is hilarious, but there are some gems in there. Yeah. Awesome. Check it out. Uh, uh, at it might, it would have been my awesome thing of the week, but I got something better. <laughs> Excellent. And that's how we do this. We, we're talking about awesome things and uh, not so much trying to get less newsy, like we said, and, and more, hey, what did you think was cool this week, right? Uh, so if you have cool, awesome things to submit through the week, I actually got a couple things from Twitter, uh, and from Chilla who couldn't make it tonight. Uh, he, we had some awesome Bluetooth stuff he wanted to show us too. So, you know, I, I was kind of interested in what was going to go on there, but hopefully we'll have him on next week. Uh, thanks Norm for filling in at the last minute here. First of all, anytime. Um, but you can drop a line, your comments and everything at contact at awesomecast.com. You can hit us up on the Google plus on the Facebook 
or on the Twitters uh, at AwesomeCast as well. Uh, so uh, you know, we do respond to that. We do we do check on on the comments and everything. So you have anything you want to start a discussion, uh, go ahead and do that there. If there's something you want us to bring up on the show uh, or promote on the show, please let us know there as well. So let's right, get right into it with the awesome things of the week. Uh, Norm, we got to go with yours first. I, I looked at what yours Oh, had. come on. No, no, no. Dude, did you, wait till you, did you <laughs> see what he put in there? No. I wait, wait. You'll, you'll understand. You'll understand. Norm, what is this? What What is this I'm looking at? <laughs> <laughs> okay Come so on, this is an old like... school awesome thing of the week and okay. uh on um, and chachi since you've watched all of netflix and you've seen this but uh, i was <laughs> i was just going on and recently i've been getting into um like chinese era not documentaries but just pop films about when the chinese being oppressed by the japanese military post-world war ii just all those sweet kung fu movies so um you know so netflix is suggesting other things to me and what came up the Octagon. I don't know how I'd never seen this movie before. Uh, Chuck Norris. Uh, and it's and this movie is older than I am. But the movie poster is what you're <laughs> oh, That is incredible. It is. The uh, Octagon. Yeah, it's marked 1980. So it just beats me out, too. It's older than I am. It's, it's definitely older than what you <laughs> So So why is this movie so awesome? Uh, did you see that poster? I mean, I'm I'm judging on the poster myself. I this is on Netflix. Hold on a second. We're making this happen. Oh yeah, it's Let's on see, Netflix. Netflix.com. I want to put this on while I'm editing tonight. This is going to be amazing. Oh, it's great. Um, uh, here, let me give you the premise. Okay. There's this secret uh, military terrorist sector or sect called the Ninja, <laughs> and uh, and our hero. I forget, his, I forget his name in the movie, but Chuck Norris and his brother, when they were kids, were were part of this secret ninja organization. And uh, the ninja group, you know, many years later, decides to aid terrorist organizations. And so now it's Chuck Norris's you know dilemma: does he does he fight against it, or does he abstain? and maintain his peaceful ways, which is he's chosen. So that's the premise of the film. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody but the Octagon. Oh, no, it starts... <laughs> so is the Octagon the sect or something, or... Uh... Well, no, the Octagon is an actual physical arena that he has to go through at the end of the movie, but um, it's pretty awesome. This reminds me a lot. Like, there's a scene in there that looks just like Mortal Kombat. Oh, man. This movie is incredible. Oh, man. <laughs> We're playing the trailer here. I'll tweet it for you guys. Uh, so if anybody who's not on the oh, video I am so watching that movie like 12 times. Uh, yeah, going to have to. Uh, I, speaking of old movies. I don't dive into Netflix enough here. Oh, I know? do. I, I, I just, I, I don't. I, I just want to like just leave it on and put whatever insane thing up next. Oh, and no. And never get a chance to do it. Uh, Netflix suggestions. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, they, they, when they, I do get into it, like fuel a, me. Dude, when I have like a Friday night, I have nothing going on. I'll pick something that looks kind of like kind of uh, something I've wanted to watch. Right. It's been in my queue. Like stuff like this gets picked up and flood my queue. Right. And then I'll just pick like the next two movies that come up in suggestions <laughs> you know it's like it's like it's like Netflix Russian roulette. You we, know? Uh, and you find like really good movies, though. We, or really messed up ones that you can't finish. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Chris and I were going through Netflix once, and we stumbled upon this movie. Because um, Chris spent a year or so in Korea mm -hmm. um, teaching English to Korean students. Um, that, that was her job. That's what she did. And so because of that and the fact that she is huge into world affairs and travel and everything... Um, one of the sections in her, her Netflix is uh, foreign mil foreign films or foreign movies or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we came across, uh, across this movie called I'm a Cyborg, But It's Okay. I had no idea what it was. Just based on the, the title alone, we were like, oh, you know what? We're going we're gonna to watch this. Well, it turned out it was a Korean film. Mm -hmm. um, all subtitles. And we could only watch 20 to 25 minutes of it because it was beyond weird. Like, it starts off in a, uh, like a radio factory. And the girl decides that uh, she's not charged enough. So she cuts her arm open and jams in power cables. What the hell? And from there she gets put in a psych ward with all of these other messed up people. 
and, and we watched like, tw like 25 minutes and we shut it off because we, we just couldn't take it anymore. Like, we, we could not take the movie serious. On the Netflix side, uh, Alex Cards, I went, well, first, wait, I do have a comment from Sonic SJ in the chat room. Uh, he says, oh, let's put it here. Uh, he says, the internal monologues are worth the price of admission. Um, if you're in that kind of mood, kill or be killed and kill and kill again. <laughs> They're good ones. Uh, and then I'll have to check those out, too. <laughs> Adam, your cues right now, guys. Uh, Alex Cars also wanted to say, uh, oh, he says, Inframan is another cheese fest. Um, Cars wanted to uh, uh, drop his awesome thing of the week. So I want to get it here before I, before I forget it. Oh, come on. What? Oh, I'm building the anticipation for you, man. I just want to wa make these people watch this video. Okay. <laughs> right after this, this will be quick. And since we're kind of talking Netflix, he's kind of into this because, of course, it's wrestling. We're, we're down with that. And I love that, like, smaller groups are doing the Netflix-like thing, right? Um, in this case, uh, Chikar, well, this wrestling is, it, it is the uh, label on this one. But stuff like the wrestling is stuff, wrestling is fun, Chikara, uh, uh, Kaiju Big Battle, which we were big fans of back in the day, sir. Um, so if you, you want to see like a different kind of pro wrestling, actually, if you're not into pro wrestling at all, this you is probably, probably the watch perfect this. thing for you. Like the one thing I'm going to talk about later on the Mayhem Show tonight. Oh, man. You know, I might. I, I... Wait, wait. I thought you were done with pro wrestling. No, I'm done with WWE. Okay. Which is what you mainly talk about, yeah, but true. I mean, for eight bucks, mm -hmm. even if you just drop eight bucks for the month, and yeah, just, just, dive just into try it, it for uh, like, I because I mean, I'm curious about some of that stuff. I know, right? So I, I mean, remind me, remind me to tell you about Squirrel, Cir Squirrel Circle review before you leave for the evening. Right. Uh, that's another one. Um, but I, it might be worth the eight bucks once. Yeah, yeah, at just least to go in and at check least. it out. And then I, I think that's what they they bet on there. And now I was a little little uh, it, the, the selection wasn't too great. There was like eight titles when it first launched, but it looks like they have a lot more. Um, and clearly, it looks like they have the King of Trios I attended. So I want to go check that out too. I like I like watching shows. I've, I've been to see the other angle of it. You know. Well, is that it? Did they include any of the Chikara stuff, or is that just purely... No, it's still, it's a lot of Chikara stuff in there. Because okay. that's the bulk of any of their libraries. Well, that's what I'd want to watch. Yeah. So I, but, I don't care about the rest yeah. of it's fun or any of that. Uh, but it's always good to kind of dive in for No, I'll watch different. the Kaiju Big Battle. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> No, Kaiju's happening. <laughs> yeah, Kaiju but. and Chikara will happen. But, yeah, eight bucks a month, I can't. Awesome. You can't possibly walk away from that. No, no. If you're, if you're a little bit interested in wrestling, you gotta at least try it out once. Um, oh, so, Chachi, <laughs> I'm gonna let you do this. Yes! I, Chachi, do, okay, first, give us a setup. Alright, so, uh, literally an hour ago, <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting upstairs, we're eating our, our pre show meal, watching uh, episode one of season two of Video Game High School, which, if you haven't watched, watch it. It's amazing. Um, yeah, just, it's, on, it's on YouTube. Just, it. just for the, the cheese alone. Can we wait? Can I do an aside on that? Yeah. So I want to like give honorable mention for awesome thing to video game high school in general. Uh, we were watching that first episode, and I, I tweeted, "This is the best thing I've seen since the guild," and <laughs> and better done even. And no, I am it, the the show in general. Um, is season one, huge cheese fest. Oh yeah. I, I mean, you can tell that the show was made for children. Um, children, but. They add in all of the, the old school flavor, like most animated features do, that uh, draw in the adults. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's not I animated. Know, man. I think it's mostly for adults. Really? Because yeah. I, I don't. I think it has a lot of one-liners one and stuff that the kids would love. So, I, I mean, but anyhow, um, episode one was released because it's YouTube's Geek Week. Mm -hmm. Um so season two, episode one of Video Game High School is available, and uh, and, and I mean it's just amazing. Um, uh, uh, season one has uh, features of uh, uh, Chuck. I don't know his real name. <laughs> uh, that guy from Chuck. Yeah, the, he the, was Chuck. The main character from uh, Chris Hardwick from, already from popped Chuck. up in this one. Justine's in it. Yeah, uh, Justine's in the first season. Chris Hardwick um, and Epic Meal Time. Uh, mm -hmm. The main guy from that is the principal. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, that's who the principal is. That's awesome. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's life at a video game high school. It's exactly it, and um, yeah. So go check that out. And, but back to my story. Oh, back, back to the important yes. story. <laughs> um, so we're we're sitting there, we're we're partaking in our, our meal, 
and watching uh, video game high school, and I come across this video on Twitter, mm-hmm. and and the title, and I didn't bo- I didn't go to the article, I didn't read any of it, I just watched the video, and that alone made it the awesome thing of the week. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know where it happens because I didn't read the article. It's Russia. It, it's in Russia. Um, basically, a guy walks down into. Well, here narrate as as we show for the for the okay, video. Okay, so uh, the main character is this girl leaning up against the wall. And that guy just comes down and bam, takes her phone. And then, hi, I'm t- ah, nut shot. And he drops. Wow. Wow. And then he gets kicked in the face. Yeah. And she like t- finisher style. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out does this chick like know karate or took some damn self defense classes? Uh, I don't know. But uh, I mean, that was one hell of a nut shot followed by one hell of a kick to the face. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, there you go. That is uh, my awesome thing of the week. <laughs> and it involves technology. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, the dude tried to jack her phone. Now so, I, I don't know about this video. I think I don't think this is real. I'm no, just gonna say. It's, a, it's a security <laughs> cam. No way. This is this video is real. It's totally fake. Totally staged. It's not. Staged. I watched it a couple times because I saw you post it in the notes. And okay, for, there's there's three things. One. When the guy falls down, he, like, falls and he, like, drops the phone, like, uh Okay, number two. Okay, this great nut shot. I mean, if you got hit in the nuts, you, you'd be you'd be in a little bit more agony than that. You're not, you're not, I don't know. And then number three, all the people walking by. People just, like, walking by like it's a video game. Like, it's just some Grand Theft Auto moment. No, that's how And goes, everyone though. else doesn't even notice what just happened. No, that's how it goes, though. That, 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 when something like that happens in the city, nobody gives a crap, you know. Like, like nobody but wants why, to be involved. Look at him. He gra- okay, number four. He grabs the phone and he doesn't even like run. I don't know. I'm a person who had a phone literally ripped from my hands and stolen. You don't just casually walk away and wait for the the victim to like retaliate against you. you so don't I don't know. know. I, that's my two cents. You don't it's know it's real. Mother Russia. That's true. You, you don't That's know what true. happens in Russia. That's some KGB shit right there. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, real or not, that's my awesome thing of the week. <laughs> I mean, right. If it's not real, I'll redact it next week. And it's still, it's still an awesome thing to to get you guessing, right? Yep. All right. So, okay, I guess it's my turn here. Um, so last week, Google had an announcement that apparently was just like breakfast with Sergey or whoever Google that they had. Uh, that, that does this this, this portion. Um, and there was a new Nexus 7, and we might touch on that here in a little bit. Uh, but the kind of cool thing that they have is called the Chromecast, which I kept see- reading as Comcast whenever I saw it on Twitter, right? Uh, have you guys heard about this? No, Chachi, I know you have. Norm, have you heard about this yet? Norm? Oh, he moved. Never mind. He moved? Maybe, He's maybe, there. Maybe the audio is going out again. We're there. Oh, there you are. Uh, but this is the, this is Chromecast. Um, it's a, gotcha. it looks like a USB dongle, right? Right off the, that's your first kind of impression of yeah. it. But then it's actually an HDMI deal, right? Um, let's see if I'm gonna pull up the video here. So the idea is you plug this into your HDMI port. It does have a thing where it, it, you're gonna have to also plug it in apparently like to a USB or or have an, a power adapter to it. This is gonna need a little bit more. But basically has like a Wi-Fi chip built in and you're on your laptop. They're showing in this video, right? Like you're watching YouTube, you're watching Netflix and you hit the button and it starts sending the video up to it, up to your TV via the via that little dongle. Um, and where this gets interesting is it's whatever video can be in a Chrome tab. What are you hearing something? You OK over there? What are you doing? It's either coming from the that video or Norm's playing video games. <laughs> I think it's coming from the video. Sometimes it, it bleeds through. <laughs> um, but the whole idea is like like you can I, I can have something on my on my uh, uh, you know Chrome in, in on my laptop and yeah. potentially from your Android device or something as well. Hit a button, send it up there. Um, that's cool. There's, there's people talking about like keeping these things on a, their keychain. So if they have to go somewhere and, and need to do a presentation, they can maybe plug this into a TV wherever they're at. Um, and plus, you know, it, it's going to yeah. They're, they're 
this is pretty open, so they're going to be, uh, you know, designing some other applications for this. They're already talking about Vimeo and HBO Go are going to have uh, compatibility for it in their, the near future. There's a few other ideas floating around. It's only 35 bucks. It seems like a really easy, cheap way to get, like, Netflix and, and Hulu and all that stuff on a TV. So It probably won't work. What do you mean it probably won't work? I don't see it working that way. You don't well. see it working that way? Why? Yeah. 35 bucks. Because it's 35 bucks. Yeah. But it's offloading a lot of stuff to the computer and your device and everything, though, I think. Like, it's not taking on... I don't think it's taking on... Or all it's taking on is, like, that video uh, uh, portion of it. And and really, is that much difference than a $35 uh, Raspberry Pi when it's stripped down like that? Raspberry Pi is more effective, though. Why? Because... All right, you got me. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, Overall, it, it seems like this was rushed. Did you hear about this? I didn't hear about the rushed point. No, I mean, did you hear about this previous to them releasing it? No, no, but they've been really interesting about hiding stuff lately. Mm. Well, actually, no, there were stories about it in advance, but nobody knew what it was. They thought it was like a USB dongle. So. I don't know. I just don't see it working that well. You don't see it working that well? No. Or if it does work for 35 bucks, you can almost not go wrong with that. Yeah. You know, compared to, you know, getting, you know, $50 to $100 for Roku and Apple TV. I don't need get... to send stuff to my TV, though. You don't. It's but just me. May... Well, you got to think about what everybody else wants to wants to do with something like this. Um, to be able to broadcast like this. Norm, what do you think of this uh, device? Uh-oh. Hey. And we lost his audio. Oh, don't. don't yeah, no. it's not there. Yeah, Bad. we don't have your audio, dude. Bad. Go check your settings. Yeah. We'll see if he comes back here. Um, well, some people think it's going to work because it's already sold out in all the Best Buys. There's a two to three week wait on Google's site. It's uh, sold out in uh, Amazon as well. I think it's just because it's 35 bucks. People are just jumping on it. Right. Uh, there's been a ter- uh, teardown by, I think I fix it, who usually does this, um, about exactly what's in it uh, as far as the CPUs and, and, and Wi-Fi and everything. Um Combo Wi-Fi chip, four gigabytes of flash memory, five twelve of low voltage RAM, so it's got a little bit of stuff in there, and it was iFixit that ripped it apart. So <laughs> for thirty again for thirty five bucks for like at least tech heads and stuff, I don't think you can really go wrong with that. Mm. Uh, the other cool thing that they put in uh, 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 last week that they updated last week was the Nexus Seven actually. Um, so again, Asus uh, seven inch laptop as usual. Um, usual, I guess, is the second one they've done. But this is the interesting thing. They raised the 30 bucks, and they have what they're calling pretty much equivalent to a retina display. Which really kind of puts it in, in direct competition with, like, $100 more for the for the Mac Mini. Uh, how much is it? Two, 230 to start with. Huh. Versus 330 for uh, <laughs> a Mac Mini. For roughly the same size. Seven, well, it's basically 7 inches, but it's a different... You know, this one's, you know, Android's more yeah. actual widescreen and stuff like that. Well, they're just so, going after Apple still. What's that? I said they're just directly going after Apple. Well, they're they're making better off than Apple. Cause they, the, they probably get it at a better price. Probably. Probably. Um, Apple's just like, oh, you want that much? Yeah, we'll pay you that. Whatever. Because <laughs> they don't care about the consumer. Well, they do stuff at a higher margin. They're, they're, not, they're not racing to the bottom cost-wise. Uh, like, like you know, it seems like the Google devices are. Um, but, I mean, it, it, that, that's kind of a big upgrade for, for something like this at this price. Um, another story that kind of came along with this, uh, Chilla actually uh, dropped in one that apparently the 4.3 update for the Nexus 7, the first Nexus 7, uh, this is what he sent in. He says, uh, this is awesome for all Android users as long as their carrier device will support the upgrade. Uh, this goes to show that software can be optimized and improve it with without a huge spec jump in the hardware side also leads to do hangouts becoming optimized using gel- jelly bean quote butter implement implementations uh could, could google blow out companies such as apple microsoft blackberry out of the water uh through mere software updates and take the hardware out of the equation so apparently the update did a good number on performance for nexus the original nexus sevens um i don't know have you have are you looking forward to that to maybe like keep your phone going there, Chach? It would never happen. 
Because um, it, they'll update it, their devices. Yeah. The, the Nexus is. They'll update that. But with your no LG problem. on T-Mobile is still going to be an issue in the long run. Yeah. It, they're not going to worry about pushing up. Well, they're uh, going to worry about it, but unfortunately everybody else gets right. it. Well, I mean, Google isn't the problem. Mm-hmm. Google will continue to create updates, Mm -hmm. but the problem is it's ultimately down to the phone manufacturer and the carrier to decide whether or not they want to spend the money Mm -hmm. to push this update out. Sounds like the Fez problem. It is the Fez problem. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, the only money these people are spending at this point is just man hours. Yeah. And... Like, I, I may not be an expert in phone software, but it seems like, you know, you move around a few ones and zeros and it's good to go. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to phone updates. Um, I'm an expert in many other things, but I'm not an expert when it comes to phone software. But I, I, I mean, it's it doesn't seem like it's because I know when we roll out roll out updates at work. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a matter of a few adjustments here and there, even on the major rollouts. So you would think if they already have the main package down and all they have to do is input their data into Google's update, mm-hmm. doesn't seem like it's that that hard of a thing. Yeah. So at, at this point, they're just being cheap. They're not putting into it enough, or they have to make their modifications. I know Samsung, uh, they they have to, well, one, they have to make sure everything works with all the crud they put in there. Right, and that's know? what the problem is. So but... so there's so many layers to it, and it's, it's never going to catch up. Right. I, I really, I, I think... And they're not going to get their money back. And I wonder if it, in the long run you're just going to see more people, and then there's also these Google Experience phones, which I don't think I grasped entirely the idea of them. They're not like a Nexus device. But they're like, hey, here's an HTC phone, but it doesn't have as much crud as it typically does. Right. Not It doesn't have the HTC stuff. It's more stock loaded with, with Android. I, I wonder at what point more general populace is going to say, oh, this is the actual good experience. You know, much like, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I think 10 years ago, a lot of us said we don't want to buy the HP computer because we don't want AOL pre-installed on it, taking up my RAM. And uh, all that other stuff. So what I know this distributor will do, you know, something stripped down. Like in that case, it was like Alienware or something. Um, well, and that and, got and, big enough. Dell bought them. Well, I mean, what it is, is a, a, it's the, it, you're right. It's the same problem that we had with, uh, with Windows computers when uh, uh, in the nineties, mm-hmm. you almost I mean, had to go have, out. They still kind of have the problem though. Not as much though. No. But, I mean, you almost had to go out and, as bad as it is, bootleg mm-hmm. a copy of the operating system you wanted mm-hmm. or uh, pay More the $300. That you, that you purchased. <laughs> yeah, or, or I lost you. Keep going. Uh, but, uh, or you pay the $300 to buy the operating system that you already bought Yeah. just so you can have a clean install of it. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with phones. Yeah. You go out and you break your warranty so you can root the phone Mm -hmm. just to have a clean version of the software you already paid for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although the only difference is at this point, you're not really, well, I mean, some of us are. But, I mean, uh, the general populace isn't really paying. It's not easy to do. Well, no, I mean, it's not even that. Uh, Ease of access isn't even a question at this point. Mm -hmm. But it's... uh, it comes down to the general populace nowadays isn't buying the software for the phones. Mm-hmm. It, it, the general populace could care less what makes this thing work. Mm-hmm. They want this, the yeah. hardware. Yeah. Because, I mean, you they go out. They want something with a camera that can text, that can get on right. Facebook. And sometimes they're not even going past that. Right. Because, I mean, if you go out to the grocery store mm-hmm. and you pull 25 old people mm-hmm that are carrying around smartphones, mm-hmm. it, they got it because their grandchild told them to get it. Yeah. They don't give a shit that or, it has... Or their lower-end models people are getting because it's the next thing from a featured phone or, hey, they don't right. have a BlackBerry on my carry a- anymore. Um, I'm seeing that with a, you know somebody we know. They've upgraded to an Android phone, but it's, it's like a, a Kyocera 
I, we were like, oh, just look it up on Google Maps or something. And that was a chore. Yeah. You know, they don't even know how much stuff their phone can do. Even that low end one at least has the basic Google features, right? He, you know, he led off by saying that it was an MP3 player. <laughs> yes, using Move Music for most of the trip, by the way. And I was um, like, uh, oh, yeah, that's a thing nowadays. Yes. Um, yes. You, you, that's really easy to do nowadays. <laughs> Uh, Norm, do you have an, uh, one? Do we have your audio? I'm not sure anymore. I don't think. No. That's been weird. There you are. Here you guys go. Hi. Can you hear me? Maybe he's super delayed. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about this uh, this topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you. It's people. It's all about hardware. People want the hardware, and they don't know or care. They right. just want it to work. Right, right. And, and they're seeing the front facing, like what they're talking about at the carriers in the commercials and everything. They don't know anything about the rest of it. I really wish Google would promote their own hardware more. But I guess then you would have the Microsoft Surface versus everybody else's RT tablets kind of situation where it get kind of like, well, you're promoting your own thing. Why are we going to make something and compete with you? You know, um, I, I feel like Surface was trying to be the Google Nexus of the Surface tablets to be. Kind of like that idea we talked about the Ubuntu phone. They're basically making that phone as an example of what you can do with this. Mm. That's what the Nexus program is. That's what the Surface program is, right? It's just different executions of the same thing, right? Well, uh, my whole problem with the uh, with the Ubuntu phone. Well, you had a whole other problem. It, I understand. It's the cost. But they're not Google. They can't drop the that that much, and they're in and it was. They were going for something on president. They're trying to make headlines with that and get attention. They're putting groceries in a Bentley. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Like, uh, do you understand that? Like, think, uh, they're going to pick up uh, uh, carpentry supplies in a Bentley. <laughs> That's an interesting way to put that. I, I, they're using. They're, they they want the top hardware. Mm hmm. But they don't need the top hardware. And all that's going to do is pass the cost on to the consumers. Mm -hmm. like, like you. Okay? If it worked, how much would you pay for an Ubuntu phone? Um, I'm not entirely sure what the promise of an Ubuntu phone is yet. A phone with Ubuntu. Well, it's more than that. They have, they have some trappings in there that are smartphone you know, friendly. It's It's going to be more than just we slapped ubuntu on this phone you know um i think they are talking about like docking stations and everything where you plug it in and it is an entire desktop that's a cool idea that is a cool idea still doesn't require the funds that they want to raise at no. that point well, yeah, they're the still about, okay at that point phone. they're still taking their kids to little league <laughs> in a bugatti okay <laughs> But still, it's one of those. They're I, they're trying to create a phone you're that not, is high end. You're not getting they're my trying point. To make, they're trying to make something that's quality level of an iPhone. You're they want you to pay eight hundred fifty dollars for this phone. That's not too far off from what you pay for an iPhone, not under contract. And I know it's not built yet. I'm I, I know that's another uh, uh, issue with it too. At what they're what they're trying to kickstart? Yeah. What was it? it it was like $32 million. Yeah, yeah. at $32 million, yeah. that phone better be double the price of an iPhone when it comes out. I wonder how that's going to... It might be, actually. Right. All the stuff Which they're putting is, into it. It falls into all of the analogies I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, seriously. They're running a taxi service out of a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. Unnecessary. I love your analogies tonight. But if they're working... <laughs> uh, it basically, if you don't get my analogies, they're using the most expensive tool to do average things, mm -hmm. which is unnecessary. I mean, all of the things that I said you can do in a, in, in a Chevy. I'm trying to remember if that was Indiegogo <laughs> or, uh, yeah, it is Indiegogo. Because quite frankly, if you own a Bentley or a Bugatti or a Lamborghini, you're not going grocery shopping yourself. Uh, the, it is uh, the, the, wondering. It, it, is, it is on Indiegogo. They're trying to raise thirty-two million dollars. They're at uh, about seven and a half million right now with twenty-two days left. So that's a week weekend. They were at like three million when we checked it a week ago. I think they had just started. Oh, they're so not getting there. I, I don't think they're getting. No. But, they're, but the, the difference is they're Indiegogo, so they don't have to reach the goal. 
Right. So, so these people are... Uh... So that's even like so it's still getting done for however many they did that. Uh, at least uh, let's see, at least a thousand. Look, look how many people they got. They got uh, twelve hundred here, eight hundred here. That's because that, got that kind of money in, you know. Uh, 200, 253 people got the two phones. I mean that that's there's people buying into it. They're excited right. about this project. You want to know why? To the project. Why? Because they saw the word Ubuntu. That's more than just the word no. Ubuntu. Come no, on. I absolutely think their branding not. is not that good. No, absolutely not. All of those people, it doesn't matter what uh, what you call the software. Mm -hmm. Those people are seeing a GUI-based Linux system. Okay. That is still going to be a GUI-based Linux system on a phone. On top of that, they're seeing the most popular GUI-based Linux system. Well, the most popular GUI-based internet uh Linux system is Android. No, that's barely Linux. I mean, it's barely it's Linux. It's barely Bullshit. Linux. That's barely Linux. That's so Google didn't have to create their own software. Anyhow. <laughs> but, I mean, if that's what it is. It, it's... Because it, even if they have 5,000 people... Note from the chat, they've already made more than the Lone Ranger. That's not important. Good comparison point. No, not really. Anyways. The Lone Ranger is a is a, a forty million dollar movie. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, the the Lone Ranger is what'll happen to this project when it's done. <laughs> Norm, let's go around to your thing. You got something about Boss Boss Jacks. Well, I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. Boss Jock Studio, uh, which is an awesome iPhone app. I know we were made aware of at PodCamp last year. If I have you, I don't have you again. We do not have Norm again, so we are going to continue. Um, all right, Chachi, I got one to throw at you, and we'll see if Norm comes back here. Uh, da, 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 da. So, I, I did you see my Twitter conversation today with what was apparently an app developer? No. So, I, I don't know. what I said something about, like, uh, you know, I was commenting on something about the glass use and everything like that. And uh, this one guy, uh, at Wareflow... Uh, where W A R E F L O on Twitter, uh, he we started conversing. And he, I guess he's developing, right? And I don't know if this is something that's actually going to come out. He's actually going to get this to, to work, or if you know if you know this is true or whatnot. Uh, but he said what he's using. I just want to kind of get your thoughts on this concept. Um, for what he's working on, think Tetris plus we. Moving your head. Uh, I saw that tweet. I didn't like move it. head to to move spin falling blocks. Uh, Google Glass may uh, lend itself to a retro game renaissance. What are your thoughts on that comment? My neck hurts. Your neck hurts. <laughs> That's the next thing we're all gonna get neck pains from it, it, from our okay. movements. There, there's. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I am on board with this Google Glass thing if it comes in at the right price. Yeah. Okay. One hundred percent. We had yeah, to discuss. Obviously, obviously. On board. However, despite the possibilities mm -hmm. of what you can do with Google Glass, mm -hmm. there's still a line. Okay. There's a line, and while at this point that line is still far away, mm -hmm. but it's a line of shit not to do with Google Glass. Okay. All right. Battleship? Yeah. That's fine. That's cool. That's okay. Speech. Right. Move to uh, A9. Right. You know? Scrabble. You could you could play Scrabble with the, the glass. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, it would be a little bit harder. Well, you think it would you, be, have, you got to figure out the interface. That's the right. problem with all this stuff. But uh, using Google Glass to play... A moving game. A moving game such as Tetris... Or even Pac-Man, mm -hmm. you could probably get away with using it to play Missile Command. Yeah, yeah. because I mean that's that's Missile Command is the one where you have the bases and you yeah. fire to blow yeah. up the so missiles. Yeah, you control moving your head. You yeah, think? you would just, just you, you move got like your a head. Receptacle th kind of thing, right? And you it wouldn't what? be as intense. You know what'd be cool if they did with the Google Glass? You would need to. This needs to interface with something else, obviously. But think what you do with like the Wii U, where you have this extra panel here. So think more like I guess think more like a light gun, hmm. where I have a screen where I'm playing that game, and like, but I get more information here, like wherever I look on the screen. 
that could be interesting. I don't know if that exact technology is really kind of in this. Because I think there needs to be more communication. Right. Probably like a infrared kind of thing, like the light gun kind of situation. But but they like the idea that this is an experiment. <sighs> this could go horribly wrong. Oh, it's going to go horribly <laughs> it's gonna, wrong. It's gonna, I mean, you know how I play Tetris. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. So, I mean, well, I remember playing people playing Super Mario Bros. Every time you hit the jump button on the Nintendo, they go like this, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's what the Wii was, was handy for. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's going to go horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember... Uh, when Super Metroid came out, yeah, uh, it's the first game that I I waited in line to get. I beat it overnight. Um, I had to go to the doctor uh, the next day because my neck was stiff. Did you have a really odd kind of placement of your TV? Yeah, you well, like uh, sitting on the floor looking up. Exactly, my yeah. my neck was stuck. You had to go to the doctor after playing Metroid all night. Yeah, Super Metroid. That's amazing. Um, and he cracked my neck and told me to sit in a chair. Well, mm-hmm. it, what it was was I started sitting in a chair mm-hmm. and wasn't comfy. Mm-hmm. So I moved. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, the floor was stable and comfy. So I played there. And before I knew it, I'd beat the game and I'd been looking like that the whole time. <laughs> so I, I could barely move my neck down. And it's just going to lead to neck injuries, which shouldn't, shouldn't do. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's the whole purpose of that. Well, think about how bad people got with the Wii controller. Yeah. You know, with that kind of movement and having this kind of work. I mean, I you've seen when pe- we put the 3D meet the team on people. You should have seen some of the, pe- <laughs> some of the people I put it on over the weekend. They're like, wow. The you know? general populace and isn't smart enough. The scary enough. part is when they start walking around. And, you know, they're not looking at anything except for that thing on their eye. It's like, ooh. No, stop. Stay like, no, still. No, 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 just, no, no, no. Just no. spin. Saying. But I, I, the general populace isn't smart enough to handle something like that mm-hmm. responsibly. Norm, are you back with us? Can we try? Maybe. I'm back. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. <laughs> awesome. Did you have any thoughts on on wildly uh, 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 interesting movements with our Google Glasses and stuff? You think we're going to have neck problems like Trashy did with Super Metroid? No. But um, I did recently learn how the Nintendo, the original Nintendo Duck Hug controller worked. Okay. <laughs> That's all I could think. But, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Uh-oh. I don't have problems with it. I, I mean, I do think that there can be advanced applications like you guys were talking about. Yeah. With... I, it might be my internet connection. I think that's the only thing. That I looks like of. an internet connection like, problem we're having problem there. Are yet. you on the Wi-Fi? I am. There you go. Yeah, you definitely need a hard line whenever possible with video. It, it, it starts getting weird uh, half the time. Um, but you were saying? Sounds like you're back. Yeah, I just think the uh, like you could have some interesting you know, you, like interface. Like if you use your phone as a controller um, and maybe some some you know games that interact with the, the real world maybe something with foursquare or um i don't know what those apps are that you know you hold your phone up and you can kind of see like restaurant views that mm-hmm. sort of thing uh maybe there's some application there i really think augmented I think reality the, i think there's a lot of possibilities i really think augmented reality is going to be the future of this thing as far as like that kind of interface and you're right i i, I and then even in chat uh sonic here in the, in the chat is saying we could make a make up a uh, uh wear a strap on your head to hold the glass kind of thing <laughs> Like, that's why that's what they already do with the fitness thing we got yeah. one of those like ea active setups and you had a, a band you put on your leg and that's where you put the one part of the controller the nunchuck part of the controller and then you put the other part in your hand and then that like that's how it registered you you know running in place or doing movements and stuff was between the accelerometers and gyroscopes in each of those right one's for your leg one's for your hand I would fall. I, I did fall a lot um, because it wouldn't detect things, and I try to do it harder, and you end up getting hurt. Um, that's why, like, Connect kind of excited me for something like that. Yeah, but, yeah, I think there's a certain point where, like, maybe, like, this Tetris idea and stuff where you need to add something else to the interface. Now, it gets to the point where this thing starts talking to the Android device a bit more, and we start opening that up. I think that's going to be really exciting. So, um, 
Hey, uh, Norm, since we have you, sounds like we still have you on the internet. You want to talk about this Boz Shock uh, thing real quick uh, before we let go? Sure, yeah. Um, so the app is for podcasting on your iPhone or iOS device. So, sorry, Chat, you won't be podcasting on the go. But, um, yeah, the, it, the I put that in the notes, not necessarily just to uh, talk about Boss Jock, but um, they, it's this Dave Mansueto's project. It's just kind of his next thing after Libsyn. And uh, he recently did a review of podcasting mics for iOS devices. And so I figured I'd take that out and um, see, you know, if you had any thoughts on those um, or, uh, or anything like that. I've tried to do a little bit with it, but I haven't invested in a microphone for podcasting for my phone mm -hmm. uh, or that sort of thing. I do have the 32-pin uh, connector for uh, the camera adapter with USB and uh, my iPhone or iPad, but um, I haven't my, – my microphone needs an external power source, so I haven't been yeah. able to use it um, in conjunction with this app. You know the but, inter um, the interesting bit I saw one the, it's a great if you're just like if, this is a great article read if you're looking for microphones in general I think uh, for that are compatible with your iPhone or iPad uh, if you're doing any recording on there but this is what I thought was interesting this iRig pre XLR adapter for the iPhone and iPod Touch so it plugs in there and and you're able to use an XLR which is like kind of the general thing like the like what we use here in the studio what we use on our um, you know out on out on our shoots and everything like that. Um, I like that because I can just get this $40 piece, use mics I already have, and then I know the quality is going to be there rather than get some kind of weird offshoot thing like like this iRig thing that they show up here. Um, you know, I can get using a mic that I know is like a good cost, decent thing, right? So uh, th that's this is a really good article just in general if you're an audiophile that wants to do more. And I remember going to WrestleCon, I saw people doing interviews recording straight to their iPad. It looks odd as hell, but apparently it works out pretty well for them. So, um, and yeah, I some of those are stereo mics, so you can get some pretty pretty interesting stuff. And it, you know, it sounds like the gap is is you know sh lessening in between you know what your home setup would be. If we're talking amateur quality here, but you know, from mm -hmm. from that to, um, you know, a studio mic they might have. Yeah, and anything like that. Like I just saw a thing. Uh, DJ Two apparently is available today for only five bucks uh, because they just released a new version of it. Um, but that you know that idea. Oh, actually, I think that's more of a DJing software kind of thing. But there's a lot of recording software you can get for your iPhone, iPad, and and this is the kind of stuff I think that that is really, um, you know, making that into like its own standalone thing. Uh, that's really cool, you know. Um, so I mean, well, there's GarageBand on on there too. So you can, you can definitely do some cool stuff with that. Um, but it, yeah, it, because the iPad in the long run, the iPad, these Nexus devices, and everything, you get the right software, and it it, it really does can, it really can replace your computer for specific tasks like this. Um, and it's really cool that we're getting to this point. I mean, for years people have been pretty much replacing their laptop if they only need the few things that their iPad can do on trips and stuff, you know. Uh, so, so that's awesome. Yeah. And what's nice is if you're, if you want to be mobile, it's really, uh, it's really convenient. You know, if you're, you don't have to take a computer, you know, you already mm -hmm. have your phone with you anyway, so you can just, you know, just bring it, whip out the microphone and plug it in and mm -hmm. do an interview somewhere. Uh, there was a really good, I, I brought, I feel like I brought, I brought this up to somebody recently. I hope it was on the show. Uh, but there was an instance where, uh, Kevin Smith was on a version Atlantic flight, I think. And, uh, Richard Branson and one of the guys from Twitter happened to be on the flight. And he got with them, pulled out his iPhone. He's got like, apparently he's got a microphone, like one of these that just goes in there and he re can record. And he got those guys and he had a pod he had a podcast recorder for a small cast like that, you know, um, like that ability to be like, oh, I can pull. It's like, it's like the camera idea we keep talking about. The best camera you have is the one that's always on you. And we're all end up using our phones or glass if you have them or something like that um i think this is you know the the best recording device you have is i get to pull this out of my pocket and do that and I'm actually i probably should look into one of these because i've been starting to record my lectures uh for for my uh adjunct uh stint uh i, I could probably stand to get better quality out of that so there you go awesome norm i am sorry you had technical issues tonight but again thanks for uh, dropping in on short notice after we had a cancellation Always a pleasure. Awesome, awesome. Anything, uh, I know you're working on a certain event coming up. I didn't know if there was any news you wanted to share or tease 
I want to give that give you that opportunity if there's anything up. I don't have anything to talk about right now, unfortunately. Okay. This, this is one of those weird years where it's slow coming. Okay. So we'll keep an ear out for that. Anything else you want to throw out there? Maybe he's gone. Maybe no. he's gone. No. No, nothing. <laughs> At Mr. Derby on the Twitters, if you have preteen girls, send them over to icewixie.com uh, and go check that out. Chachi! What up? You have uh, you, you're on the internet today. I am on the internet. You know that? You know you're on the internet. I'm on the internet. That thing we filmed last week. Oh, on Songs Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, another yeah, video yeah, yeah. that that you that we made too from the same shoot of that weird thing that happened down there. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah go. It, it's uh, apparently it's legal to parachute uh, to parasail, parasail out of the the rivers in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um. And we were shooting. I, I, we were shooting Chachi, and I'm like, I'm like, hey, if they take off, let me know. I don't care. We'll stop the shoot until I can turn around and catch yeah, this. Right. And we ended up having to. And we, um, but uh, yeah, because we, we wouldn't have been able to yeah. do it anyways, right? Uh, but yeah, it, apparently that's a, a thing that you are legally allowed to do. Yeah, there it is. That you <laughs> are you legally go. allowed to do in the rivers in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, watch out for bridges. I imagine um, that seems dangerous. But it seems really dangerous. I kind of want to do it. <laughs> I love it at the beginning. You saw it. You can see his arms up in the air yeah. too. So there he goes. We follow him a good way down towards West End Bridge. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was pretty cool. So yeah, that, that's the thing you can do. Mm -hmm. So we'll take Norm parasailing sometime. Um, and of course, I'm over at Sorgatron.com. I survived Detroit. I'll be talking. Yeah, I'll probably do a post about that. Uh, probably, I, I'm going to post about the thing that I did not do with my Google Glass that I'm kicking myself for while I was up there, but it completely kind of dawned on me as we were going uh, for this documentary shoot. Uh, so that's over at Sorgatron.com. Of course, everything else is over at SorgatronMedia.com. We're plugging a lot of the news into there, um, including that that news, the newsy thing that happened the last week, and there might be more newsy things, and I'll try to share those around on Twitter and everything as well. So, uh, you know, follow me at Sorgatron on Twitter, Sorgatron Media as well on Twitter. And, uh, hey, for this, at AwesomeCast, check us out. We're on uh, the Google Plus and the Facebook. Let us know your awesome things. If you want to join us live and give us your awesome things right here on the air, just like Alex Cars did earlier tonight, go to live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday about 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're on the Justin TVs and everything. So go check that out, just like a whole bunch of you look like you are right now. And, of course, you can get all these episodes on iTunes, on Stitcher, um, on Blip TV, on YouTube as well. Just look up the awesome cast and look for the one with our smiling faces. Yeah. Uh -ha. Because I was, people like to use the awesome cast a lot, apparently. Uh, but we got the dot com, damn it. Thanks. To, well, Rob got the dot com, but he's off doing cool things. Oh, hey, Rob's doing stuff. What's he doing now? Hold on, they're putting. Hold on, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Because huh. uh, I like, like I said, Rob. Uh, he's not on the show uh, very much anymore, if at all. Uh, but he is literally going out doing awesome things. And apparently today that involved, as we pop over to his Instagram, uh, that included putting bubbles in uh, Columbus Circle up in New York City. I don't know what the bubbles are for. But uh, I don't know, they look, they're look they meeting rooms or something like that. So uh, hopefully uh, we can get some more information uh, on that. As bubble Boys. Uh, bubble Boys? They're creating bubble boys. bubble boys? Did you see my uh, my suggestion for a new segment on the show? I did not. Where in the world is Rob De La Creta? That is kind of what we, we do, though. And we get music. That is, that, it really is. It really is. Because, I mean, what? he was He's here in New York City. Um, he's been in Miami before. I don't know where the crazy pyrotechnica uh, user generated fireworks techno show happened um i think it was called thump or something like that uh we, 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 we've been we've been trying every time i see something crazy like this i've been trying to tweet it out on the awesome cast so you guys can all see uh what rob's up to as well because he is he is the awesome cast out in the world making awesome things and that's a uh, you know that's really awesome I, it's really cool that he's in the position he is over there at iron tank so awesome Awesome. Thanks, Norms. Thanks, Chachi. Thanks to our awesome chat room tonight. Always jumping. <laughs> Rob released new DLC today. Yes, thank you. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome.